Um, welcome, welcome. It's good afternoon for some of you and good morning for some and I think it's evening for or dinner time for those in Europe, but um, depending on where you are, um, would love to really just welcome you and thank you for joining us again um, this year um, for the annual, annual meeting of the NCI Cohort Consortium. As you can tell, it's virtual this year. Um, nothing that we could, uh, we had any control over, but um, we promise to make it as smooth and as a, as, as a memorable experience as possible. Um, so happy that you all could join. Um, I would like to um, direct you to the slide and um, you know, we wanna make sure that you have a smooth experience virtually for this meeting today and tomorrow. So if you would like to edit, any part of your name, the appearance of your name on the Zoom, um, you can do that by opening the participant window and hovering over your name, selecting more, and you can rename. Um, you do not have to be on video, but if you are, um, you can wave and say hello. Um, uh, but um, we, we are happy to, to see all of you, um, the, the regulars and the newcomers um, to our annual meetings. Um, we would definitely love to encourage um, a lot of engagement throughout the meeting. Um, this today and tomorrow and um, you know please feel free to enter your questions and comments in the chat window and a moderator will facilitate the question and answer so they'll ask your questions um, on your behalf um, so please be sure to enter those throughout the meeting if you do have any technical questions um, or issues going on um, feel free to send an email to Jennifer Schaefer she is our awesome webinar host. She will be for today and tomorrow. Um, so send her an email or you can shoot her a note in the, in the chat window. So on that note, I would hand it over to Jennifer and she can give you a few more details on, um, you know, logistics regarding the Zoom platform and controls that would um, be useful for you to know about um, for the meeting. So Jennifer, do you want to take it away? Yeah, thank you, Nonye. Uh, so to kind of reiterate a few of those items, um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, uh, all your meeting controls are in the lower menu bar. You'll find the chat, your mute icon, uh, the participant panel if you're looking to find that. Um, we do ask that if you can rename yourself, please do. This just allows us to help identify who you are, especially as you kind of engage in conversation using the chat box. So using the participant panel, um, shut up, find, hover over it, and you will be presented with the options of more, and you can select rename. For our attendees, you are not required to use webcam. Um, you, no need to, to turn that on if you don't want to. Um, we do also ask that you please keep your line muted for the duration of the meeting. Um, this is just to help minimize interruptions, disruptions, back-end children crying, leaf blowers in the background, um, just so that we do not interfere with any of our pre presenters' presentations. As Noni mentioned, Q&A will be facilitated by our session moderators, so please submit your questions, your comments throughout the speaker's presentation, no need to hold them until the end, in the chat window and select all participants or hosts if you'd like to ask your question uh, anonymously. Uh, the moderators will ask the questions on your behalf during the Q&A sessions of the agenda. Please note we'll make every effort to address as many questions as time permits. However, we might not get to all of them, uh, but we will be capturing them and there may be an opportunity for later follow-up. Please note this, mess this meeting is being recorded. Um, so just by turning on your audio or participating verbally, you are consenting to having your voice and image recorded. Um, again, if you have any technical difficulties, please feel free to contact me via the chat or the email in the lower portion of the screen. And with that, I will turn it back over to Nonia to begin our presentation. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so um, moving on to the first part of our agenda, I would like to introduce Dr. Kathy Helsel-Sauer. Um, she is the Associate Director of the Epidemiology and Genomics Research Program within the Division of Cancer Control and Population Sciences at NCI. Um, to start us off with some opening remarks. So Kathy? Thank you, Nonye, and welcome everybody. As Nonye said, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on your time zone. We're quite the international global meeting today. We're joined from around the globe in various time zones. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Because of the challenge of time zones, we have split this meeting up to the afternoon and a morning. So someone has to be up very early or up late and we appreciate 
those of you who are um, joining us and putting it, putting, trying to put less pain to at least uh, minimize the pain for some people during the meeting. So, but thank you for joining us. This is our first virtual meeting. Um, I want to thank all the project groups who met virtually over the past few weeks. Uh, by all reports, this went very well, um, was very active and interactive among the groups. And thank you for your patience and cooperation in these clearly unusual and devastating times. And I'm so glad that we have had good news last week and this morning with two potentially very highly effective vaccines that will hopefully in the future minimize our need for all virtual meetings. I want to give a special thank you to Lynn Wilkins. May, can I have the next slide, Jennifer? Um, thank you to Lynn Wilkins for serving on the steering committee. She's been a member of the steering committee since 2017 and chair in 2020. She's been very active and pushing forward many of the strategic plan activities that she'll briefly touch on later this afternoon, but a big thank you to you, Lynn for all your work on the committee before and as chair. Um, I also want to welcome, this is one of our early risers today, um, Roger Mill, who will be joining us as chair in 2021. He'll take his office on in January and chair elect Heather Eliason. Thank you both to serve for serving on the committee and then for taking on the leadership of that. Big thank you to all the steering committee members who are listed here. Um, you can read those and we'll have a special thank you for Debbie Wynn and Bob Hoover. Bob who retired in June and is emeritus with NCI and Debbie Wynn who's planning to retire in January. And we thank them for all their years on the committee and for all their work and more to come on that. For those of you who may be interested in serving, we don't have elections this year, but next year we will have elections. We have three year terms. Um, they are renewable, but that's with a self-nomination and going through the election process. So please consider that. We meet monthly, and then there are many subcommittees that meet at other times. So depending on your interests, you may want to join those subcommittees. And since we had this very productive um, strategic planning sessions, there are lots of future activities to work on. So I would encourage you to think about serving on the committee. Could I have the next slide, please? So special thank you, as I said, to Lynn Wilkins, um, who inaugurated the webinar series that's been ta taken off and very well attended. And Nanye Harvey, who's been the executive director for 14 years, I believe, and um, has been an incredible executive director, keeping us all on target, organized. And she is leaving us <laughs> to go to the NIH Office of the Director to work on data sharing in a new, newly formed office there. So we clearly thank Nanye for all her service and wish her the best. And we are fortunate to have Camille Pottinger here, who um, has been working closely with the consortium and with Nanye, who's ready to step in and she will take on the role of executive director. Um, Joanna Lena has been, um, is the scientific director and has been very active on the consortium, on survivorship um, activities within the consortium, but also the um, cancer epidemiology database, which I'll briefly touch on. Thank you for all the webinar support from Jennifer, for, um, ICF, couldn't do any of this without her, and for Audrey Wellens and Katie Cordacrax on the communications team who have helped to put all the slides together and other activities and advertisement about this. Can I have the next slide, please? So as I said, Nanye is leaving NCI, uh, moving up in the world to the NIH Office of the Director. We should give a virtual round of applause and thank you for all of Nanye's service. And as I said, Camille is stepping into the role and we are fortunate to have such great easy transition on the one hand, while we're sorry to see Nanye leave, but she's left in capable hands with Camille and as well-trained. <laughs> Can I have the next slide, please? So this is a little surprise for Nanye <laughs> that will arrive in the mail 
but in recognition of her all her um, 14 years of service of outstanding leaderships and contribution to the consortium and facilitating everything that she has done with the consortium, which you don't realize how much effort <laughs> goes in to this, um, all the activities of the consortium, helping all the um, subcommittees and all the work and the commit annual meeting is just one small part of that. So we are clearly indebted to Nanye for all activity. I will greatly miss her, but wish her all the best. So again, thank you, Nanye. And I have the next slide. So just a few um, quick things to call your attention to. Um, there is a final policy draft for um, data sharing. So this is Nanye's passion. This was topic of her dissertation as Dr. Harvey that she is now. Um, and that was just published. It will be effective in 2023, but I would call your attention to that. It's very well written document. Um, we also have a new request for applications out for environmental exposures and cancer risk. The webinar occurred um, last week, but you can um, click on that when it, it'll be posted with all the information for that. So we encourage you to consider that and consider applying for that. And for all the funding opportunities, please go to our website in ZCCPS, the cancercontrol.cancer.gov for information. Can I have the next slide, please? And as I mentioned before, um, Joanna Lena has the contact for this, the Cancer Epidemiology Descriptive Cohort Database, CEDCD, which has gone, undergone major renovation. It's a much friendlier site, um, nice art by Katie Cordacrax, actually, um, in updating the site, and much more user-friendly and tested as user-friendly. And what we now need to do is update. And they've been working diligently to have a user-friendly way to update the database. And this should be available, we are hope, in February of 2021. So stay tuned for emails that will come on that to upload and get the information that's on there to be much more current. If you haven't checked out the database, I encourage you to look at it because it is very nice, can give you a very overall description of cohorts and soon we'll have updated cancer counts so you can have an idea when you're planning a study of what cohorts to um, go to to think about planning your studies. The next slide. Now I'd like to turn it over to Lynn, our um, chair of the steering committee. Lynn. Thank you very much, Kathy. Um, I'm happy to tell you about what um, the steering committee has been doing this year. Uh, next slide. So this year, the steering committee established the, um, as Kathy mentioned, the NCI uh, cohort consortium webinar. And uh, we, we actually decided to do this before um, all the shutdowns. So it, it was actually a good, good timing. Um, we've hosted two webinars so far, one on COVID and one on early stage investigators. And we have quarterly uh, webinars planned in 2021. Um, if people have ideas of webinars they'd like to see, uh, please let us know and because um, we're always looking for topics. We, have a, we now have a representative of the associate member council on the steering committee, that's the early stage investigator group. Um, of course, we did the annual meeting planning, which was uh, quite different this year, being virtual. Um, we reviewed two new project proposals, one on um, setting up a, con a cohort consortium for appendix cancer, and one on population attributable fractions. Um, and we participated in the international 100K cohort consortium uh, annual meeting, and that was virtual in May. Uh, next slide. Um, we are implementing, uh, we are, have ongoing implementation of our strategic initiatives, which the past many years, you, um, you as a group have helped us define what those are. And we have five um, areas that we're um, targeting, which is communication, or five priority areas, career development, 
uh, address common challenges, research facilitation, and leverage cohorts to fill scientific groups. So this diagram shows the goals in the middle and shows that we have developed strategies and we actually have activities in each of these areas. And I'm not going to go over this um, in detail, but you can, uh, you can look at it um, at your leisure. Um, I will point out, you know, the career development is an easy one to follow. We, um, the AMC uh, Council was developed for that and activities are, are forming out of that. Okay, next slide. Um, the project, we have a, a very active subgroup, the project group subcommittee. It uh, was called the working group subcommittee. And I'm going to describe the activities of that group this year. Um, they have ongoing review of the project group activities. Um, they, um, we had presentations to the steering committee of two uh, projects, one on health effects of cigar, cigarello, pipe, and hookah smoking, and one on the colorectal cancer pooling project. Those have been really valuable for us to understand what, is, what works well and what doesn't work well for um, doing these projects with, the co with a cohort consortium and seeing if we can help uh, where there's um, bottlenecks. We, uh, in December, we'll hear about inflammation and breast cancer risk and mortality. We have re uh, revised the progress report form for the annual, um, annual progress for the projects this year. We have a draft authorship uh, policy guidelines for the cohort consortium. And we are discussing, um, exploring uh, guidelines for data transfer agreements and material transfer agreements. Those are a little trickier um, because there's so many different um, needs there, but that is a, a bottleneck for doing analysis in the cohort consortium. So we want to develop guidelines to see if we can smooth, make that smoother. Um, exciting, we have a new, um, coming soon, a new Project Hub database. If you go to your uh, materials tab on the meeting website, you'll see screenshots and you can request access to this. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, it shows um, a screenshot of the new Project Hub. And I think it'll be really easy, you know, really good to use. It's, um, you'll be able to search for projects, you'll be able to find who to contact for certain projects, and I think it'll be a welcome, a welcome update. Okay, next slide. Um, so this annual meeting, the agenda, actually this annual meeting already started in October. Uh, we had 13, uh, sorry, 18 virtual project group meetings starting October 8th. And we had a webinar by the Associate Member Council last week. Um, today and tomorrow, we're going to have scientific sessions. Today, it's from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and tomorrow, 8 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Today at 2.20, we're going to have lightning talks. The abstracts of this are in the meeting website. Tomorrow, we will have presentations on participant engagement and data sharing and GDPR updates. Both days, we're gonna have updates from the cohort consortium uh, project groups. And of course, we will be asking, as always, for your evaluation and feedback so we can uh, make the meeting more relevant every year. Uh, we'll do that through polls and chat box, which will be, will be different, we'll see. Um, hopefully, we'll get a lot of participation in that. Okay, next slide. Okay, and I'll hand it back to Kathy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so now we ha always, as usual, have an update from the two division directors that are involved with the cohort consortium. And it's my pleasure to introduce both of them. I'll do it at the same time. But Dr. Robert Croyle is the director of the Division of Cancer Control and Population Sciences. Dr. Stephen Chanick is the director of the Division of Cancer Ep Epidemiology and Genetics, which is, which is the intramural division. 
Um, both of the, the origins of the cohort consortium are from the combined efforts of both of these, and we have um, great support for continuing this. So I will turn it over to Bob. Thanks, Kathy, and uh, welcome everybody. And thanks for getting together for another cohort consortium meeting. And uh, I know we've bleeds into multiple components and. Uh, and it's it, not quite the same as being all together in one place, but we're doing our best to kind of fill in as many of those collaborative aspects as we can. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who's a member of the core consortium for all the great ongoing work and collaboration. It's been a really productive year scientifically again this past year, uh, and we look forward to supporting another great year going forward. Um, a special shout out also to Nanya Harvey for all of her work with the core consortium and good luck Nanya in your new role at NIH. Uh, he'll be terrific and welcome Camille. Uh, I think all of you, if you don't know her yet, you'll, you'll enjoy working with her just as you did the Nanya. Camille's terrific and core consortium was really fortunate uh, to have her as a part of your team. Uh, and thanks to uh, Kathy Helzesauer and all the program staff and the Epidemiology and Genomics Research Program here at NCI in our division. Uh, we've got many, many people who play key roles in supporting the cohort consortium and a lot of, lot of terrific work behind the scenes on your behalf. Um, and I also want to thank the steering committee, Lynn and the members of the steering committee for all the work that you do, all the constant improvements. Every year we're constantly tweaking developing new features, new services, uh, new informational resources, enhancing the website. The greater engagement of junior investigators has been terrific too. So thanks to the steering committee as well. Um, I had the special pleasure at this event of uh, recognizing a very special person whom Kathy's already mentioned, and that is uh, our own Debbie Wynn, who as Kathy mentioned, is going to be retiring at the end of this coming January. Uh, and uh, I'm thrilled to do this because Debbie's been such a team player, such a contributor at NCI for many years. Uh, but a lot of you may not be aware that uh, Debbie had a whole nother career before she even joined NCI. She was at the US CDC and uh, she was intimately involved in the development of two of CDC's most important population science data resources and data collection infrastructures. Uh, both the National Health Interview Survey and also in Haines, uh, where Debbie played a key role in getting that developed and off the ground. And so something we kind of take for granted now, the whole scientific world takes for granted, but uh, Debbie was there at CDC when NHIS and in Haines were developed. Um, then she moved over to uh, NIH, worked in the intramural program at the Dental Institute, came over to NCI, uh, and played multiple roles in her epidemiology program, in the program role, in the branch chief role, associate director role. Uh, and, and then I was really pleased to work especially closely with Debbie when she served as deputy director, principal deputy director of the Division of Cancer Control Population Sciences. Um, and then uh, when NCI went, underwent a leadership change at the division level, uh, Debbie was asked by NCI leadership to take on the role of acting director of our Division of Cancer Prevention. Uh, a, a big, big job and did a terrific uh, job there as we conducted the national search and then eventually brought on Phil Castle, who's now directing that division. But I wanted to uh, take this opportunity with all of our colleagues from around the world in the cohort consortium to recognize Debbie, especially for her role in the cohort consortium for 20 years uh, being there at the beginning, along with Bob and others, uh, and, uh, and all the behind the scenes roles that Debbie has played uh, in a, such a valuable way. Debbie is such a role model. Uh, unlike some of our visible leaders here in the US recently, Debbie's always led with humility, uh, with sharing, with generosity, uh, generous in spirit, generous with her ideas and creativity, and never concerned about who gets the credit uh, she's given away a lot of great ideas over the years to colleagues in the community. Uh, so Debbie, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We're pleased to award you with this Core Consortium Award of Merit. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I'll miss, I'll miss you all. <laughs> 
but we will, I guess I will pick up. Uh, I'd like to, this is Stephen Chen. I'd like to welcome everyone to this uh, cohort consortium meeting. And first of all, recognize uh, Debbie and the remarkable contributions she's made with such both grace and consistency and a smile on her face. Uh, it's really always been a pleasure working with you, Debbie, and we will miss you and hope that you come back. I also want to call out Nanye, who has just been marvelous in in um, in in really uh, enabling the cohort consortium to take off and become an extraordinary uh, organization. And I also think it's important to uh, call out Kathy Helsesauer for her leadership in really as in her role in DCCPS, really making this uh, such a marvelous resource and a terrific scientific opportunity. And it's really that that I think is so important when we now turn to think about Bob Hoover. As Bob Hoover has retired, he is now an emeritus scientist within the intramural program. He's retired after 48 years. Sorry for calling you out on that, Bob, but it's public knowledge and I can do that. And Bob, you have been a remarkable intellect and a remarkable leader, a remarkable visionary, particularly uh, here in the co consortium when you and Bob Hyatt and Debbie and Joe Framani and others envisioned this more than 20 years ago. We started the meetings 20 years ago, but I think the conversation started well before that. And uh, that vision, and more importantly, that very quiet, deft touch in making things happen has really been a very important thing that the, when we have 176 people are on right now and 174 of them are standing on the shoulders of the two giants who we are uh, feting today, Bob Hoover and, and Debbie Wynn. And I think it's really only right and the right time as well to give this award of merit to Bob and thank you for all the things you've done from your landmark research on menopausal hormone uh, and breast cancer, going back to those 1970s meetings where uh, you tell those extraordinary stories that have led to a tremendous amount of very important uh, etiologic and clinical and preventive activities. Uh, your work with DES and discovering and quantifying multiple major adverse health comes associated with any number of, of conditions. There's so many things that are done in our community, both extramurally and intramurally, that we see really map back to early observations, comments, or suggestions that Bob either published or he offered to others to pick up. And so many careers really have Bob Hoover as a central seed in, in really starting those. And, you know, going starting back in the cancer maps and the geographic patterns and susceptibility, immunosuppressive therapies, environmental causes, Bob, the list goes on. And we feel blessed that you've been with us for 48 years and that you are going to continue to work with us as a scientist emeritus. And when we finally can go back into Shady Grove altogether, hopefully by the end of 21, we will see your bright and smiling face and look forward to in 22 having the annual St. Patrick's Day party in which Bob really shows his true personality. And those who have attended that know it's a very special event that you can't describe. You just have to experience it. And we salute you, Bob, um, in so many ways. And thank you for all that you've done. And let me turn it back to uh, Lynn and Kathy and, and they can lead and go forward. Thank you again. Thank you both. What do, I can't read your hat. Uh, what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, think again. Make America. That, that's better than make America Great Britain again. That's I have one of those. <laughs> There's Bob Hoover. Bob, would you like to say a word? Yeah, well, I just want to uh, thank you all and uh, for all of them, all of the um, many who were responsible for the blossoming, not only of this uh, remarkable thing we're talking about uh, for several days here, but for everything that uh, has been, been made available to me to use and to, uh, and to fantastic people to, to work with, and uh, including Nanya. I don't know how you're letting her go like this, but hopefully it 
could be good for her. It was going to be uh, really tough for us. But thank you all for getting for my thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob and Stephen, for acknowledging all the great works of Debbie and Bob Hoover. Thank you both for everything. And I remember the very beginnings, and I remember um, coming on board as one of the, quote, smaller cohorts, as Bob might remember. And um, this cohort consortium has expanded greatly, and it's really nice to see all that happen. And thank you all for your contributions.